Hi, everyone. Um, before I, um, also Dave joins me, uh, I just wanted to briefly touch base on how we choose our hosting institutions because we're also going to present to you who will be hosting No Time to We 7. Um, basically, there's a, a Google form online that you can happily fill out if you have an interest. Also, I will also come and see you and like plant a seed so that then you can think about it and talk to whomever you need to talk about it. Um, or if you you know, just want to come talk to us. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Adela to the stage. Because, yeah, I can pull it up. She'll introduce where we'll be hosting No Time to Waste 7. Hello, everyone. It was an um, intense day, intense two days. So I'm very happy to have your couple of minutes of attention. This is not taking long. So uh, I'm Adela Kudlova from the National Film Archive Prague. Uh, and I'm here to introduce you to what's going to happen next year. So um, these are just a couple of my contacts. You can reach out if you want. And so the No Time to Wait 7 is happening in Narodní Filmový Archiv in Prague. So... <laughs> <clears throat> so this is just a short teaser uh, and uh, I will just briefly introduce what we are doing in the National Film Archive Prague. So obviously we care for the film heritage and uh, also several other materials you can read out yourself, it's, it's fine. <laughs> We have a large collection, uh, actually one of the largest in the Central Europe. And um, yeah, uh, if you want to basically uh, view some films of our collection yourself and what we've been working on in the digitization, you can uh, try this link. There is different platforms, VODs that we are streaming on and especially in the digital laboratory which I didn't say I'm the head of digital laboratory uh, with other eight colleagues so <coughs> uh, I do care of the born digital acquisitions and except of that we all work on digital restoration 35 16 millimeters uh, magnetic sound tapes, digitized cassette media. Uh, we also introduced the print rip, which my colleague Yonage was presenting here, I believe, a couple of years ago. And we also produce some of our own content, like those kind of presentations and stuff like that. Uh, we're highly based on uh, our data management um, in open source solutions, so I really want to uh, give it up for all the people that are involved in those solutions. And uh, yeah, every time uh, and every institution is highly based on people, so I want to thank everyone for their contributions. It wouldn't be possible to have everything without you. That's it. Thank you and see you in Prague. Uh, so often at the end of No Time to Wait, we kind of open it up to the audience to share some closing comments, uh, so they don't need to be a question. It can just be part of your perspective or how you feel, <laughs> some suggestions for the future. Um, but your yeah, comments are welcome. Um, I, I was just thinking about uh, when I went to um, fil film preservation school, hearing about this uh, particular expert that had this method for um, I think treating film that was highly brittle and often other people in the community like really wanted to gather their knowledge because they could see this process was very successful. 
but this person didn't want to share any of the knowledge. And I think there was this kind of perception that like what makes you an important, valuable member of a community is having some sort of like exclusive knowledge that you have like this kind of expertise that nobody else does. So people have to come to you. Um, and I don't know, all, all archives and collections certainly struggle. Like we've seen a number of organizations here that are, are well funded to those that just need a tremendous amount of help and support. Um, so I like that sort of, you know, no matter what kind of resources you're working with, all of us are kind of coming here in a spirit of teaching transparency and trust. Um, just kind of in opposition to, the, you know, the approach of, of gatekeeping and trying to to keep information inside yourself to as a way to make yourself a valuable member of community. So I am so grateful that so many of us work so hard to improve the workflows that we have um, and to just constantly grow and evolve our work to be more effective and to just share our work with each other as we do. Um, I really like how so many of the presentations don't just show us like sh we're not just showing each other what we made, but we're showing each other how we learned and developed and grew all along the process. So I really appreciate this theme of having this kind of accessible and partly inspiring um, style of presentation at this conference. All right, that's it. I didn't write that down. I just thought of that over there when I was like, okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> Are you going to add, anything to add, Alessandra? <laughs> well, I don't know. Any comments? Yeah, if any and if you guys have any closing uh, closing thoughts, I would be happy oh. to, to hear them. Two thumbs up from Radoslav. Nice. Yep. Nice. We got some Radoslav awesome. approval. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, as you, some of you know, we always also send out, like, another Google form for you to give us feedback so on. So many. So many. Um, yeah, so feel free to always, like, just get in touch with us and email us. Um, it's going to be sometime in November because we need to double check with other conferences. I have a proposal to be on the first days of December as usually because uh, as a bonus, uh, Prague is very beautiful uh, and has a Christmas market. That can be a bonus uh, of the, this, this conference. That is true. That is, we actually do like our Christmassy vibe for no time to wait. Yeah, but the fact there was a perfect combination of. Uh, I would agree, of glue wine. <laughs> Blue wine and open source tools. I know. Um, we should have had a like a Halloween party. I don't know if it's a holiday. Or sure, sure. <laughs> we can, I mean, there's still some time. Um, yes, we don't have the exact dates because we always need to check with other conferences, but that's always toward the end of the year. There may be some changes depending on where we're hosting because we're obviously dependent on the host institution and their schedules and their availabilities. Yeah, it does seem a bit like... A you know, as at, at this phase of the pandemic, a bit conferences are kind of announcing their timelines a bit later than they normally are. So when I'm kind of asking around to other board members, they're like, "We're not quite sure yet." Like, but, but hopefully we'll we'll final, finalize the dates quite soon. Alexander, uh, don't leave me alone. Oh no, I just I, I had a small a small. I mean, I, I love you guys. I love this conference. I'll come to this conference forever and ever. Um, one thought I had was that one thing I kind of missed from the previous years is the panels. The kind of the sum the panels that kind of summarize the main themes and brought together some of the speakers, so it wasn't just presentations. I I think that those were really valuable and like to see those back if possible. Yeah, I think um, I I mean we would agree. Um, and if you were following how the program was being put together, you would have probably seen some like space carved out for panels, but we sort of failed to put those together. But it's also on you if you have an idea to propose a panel, please do so. Uh, even if you think it's last minute, please always suggest it because we will always try to accommodate a good idea. Um, I might be the only one in the room who is not an archivist himself, so please allow me to, to tell you how great it is to spend two days with you, what an including community you are, and how much I enjoyed uh, being with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for organizing it. Thanks, Carl. Um, yes, it was my first year attending, and I'm one of the travel grant uh, recipients. But I just wanted to say that um, the conference exceeded my expectations. Um, the community in particular were so welcoming and so encouraging and also inspiring. Um, and I definitely leave feeling very inspired, which I, I have come to understand is part of the no time to wait um, effect. So, thank you. 
Um, I'll, I'll just say one thing I really appreciate always about No Time to Wait, but especially this year, is the gender balance in presenters, because often you go to a technical conference and it's dominated by men, but um, in this conference it was nice to see um, a nice balance of folks who were presenting, and, and, and of skill levels and experience levels and all that, so that, that's always delightful to see. Yeah, that's great, I have to say, which I think is probably a good thing. It's not that we set out to do that, it's just, it's so great how it's probably coming together within the, you know, equal representation. So, awesome. Kieran. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, um, I just want to encourage people who maybe um, are watching online or who are here who have never spoken uh, at the conference to encourage them to talk about their work even, you know, and I think that things like lightning talks um, and maybe the reintroduction of panels are a great way to kind of get into speaking. And I think like it really, like people start talking to you that much more afterwards at the breaks and everything. And it's, um, and it can be quite a terrifying thing to do, but to just, um, it's, it's ultimately a very rewarding experience. So I guess that's my message to people who haven't ever spoken. Um, yeah, I was, I was kind of thinking earlier that it might be nice to have a volunteer role that is uh, kind of like a, a, a supporter for the development of presentations or a viewer so that like we could volunteer and if somebody who's planning to present here wants like a peer review before they come that you know somebody would be able to review their presentation give them feedback and just encourage them and you know especially for like new presenters who are coming who I don't know sometimes like I write a presentation and I don't feel good about it <laughs> I just, like show somebody else and it helps tremendously to just get peer review any other comments just a second. People that know me know that uh, there is practically no conference which I uh, not visit. And uh, from that, my experience, uh, I want to say that uh, no time to wait, uh, slow but stable become the key events in the audiovisual uh, uh, community, not only archival but general, due to the, this uh, particular uh, combination of feature that uh, uh, make it uh, from a one point very professional and from another point a very relaxed, uh, community friendly, etc. So I think, that, and even the main competitor, Ari Archival Workshop, already for unknown reason is not hot. So you just have the chance to remain the key event and you should be on the level of being key event, not just sim some simple small uh, events, you're already the key event in the community, so you need to be on the, how to say, on the, in line with uh, uh, your uh, uh, Heiger uh, role, so I hope next year to be more people and uh, more um, more uh, different uh, uh, topics, despite this year topics uh, really spreadly, uh, very spread on the problems. But uh, always there is a room for uh, to be better. Only the sky is the limit. Thank you. Yes, thanks for your comment. That was lovely. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if somebody is. Have, are people online still tuned in, or is there anything coming from them? Hi. Thank you for. Oh, lots of emoji hearts. I hope. Yeah, everyone's super inspired. <laughs> Yeah, a few comments. Uh, I, I saw Connor was following the entire day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, hats off to him for, for following this along. A lot of just appreciation for the amazing conference and pe people feeling inspired. And uh, thanks so much to everyone for, um, yeah, uh, keeping up with us, even though we had some technical issues, as always. But. Yeah, if um, any comments, any other question, otherwise we'll just go on to the long list of thank yous that are <laughs> heart, heartfelt. Um, so yeah, we really want to thank you all for your sharing, your experiences and knowledge. Um, as uh, you know, as Dave said, it's not always easy, and but it's very much welcome and contributing to more ways than one, I think. And that comes to Rado's last point of it's not only the quality of the presentations or just being, you know, but you're also present during the breaks and during lunch and during the dinners to uh, make this a really comfortable and inclusive uh, conference. Um, so yeah, really appreciate your engagement on so many levels. Um, so I'd like to thank our hosts again. Laura had to leave, so thanks you, Laura. Thank you, Rasa and Johan for having us and for bearing with us. Uh, all the volunteers, the list is in the, 
their list, their names are in the lit in the program. So thank you to all of them, um, to all of those who jumped in and just helped us for the past two and a half days. Uh, yeah, shout out to you guys online uh, who's been following us. To the few people that got lost in Gather Town, we see <laughs> you. We like your pets. Um, and again, thank you to all your sponsors. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think that's, the, I mean. Yeah. We always do a lot of work to just keep the conference to be like a free registration event as opposed to like a $300 <laughs> registration event. Um, <laughs> no, and we, uh, no, last night we were joking about having a $2.99 registration <laughs> like <laughs> um, of in-app purchases. Um, but uh, yeah, ob obviously like we need, we need sponsors and we need volunteers and we need a lot of contributions from speakers in order to do this. Uh, so there, I know there was kind of a theme in many of the presentations about organizations kind of um, collectively trying to support the development of open source tools rather than, you know, just purchasing more and more of the, the same proprietary ones. Um, so that's that re that's the same spirit really keeps this conference running and we're really grateful to the sponsors who have helped us this year and all the last ones. And, and then next year too, whoever those sponsors are. Yes, <laughs> whomever you are. Um, all right, I don't know. See uh, you in Prague? Yeah, we do the group photo. Oh, like group here. photo, <laughs> yes. Do you accept the sponsorship from let's say your website position? Uh, we can talk after. Well, yeah, we can try. And <laughs> it'll be interesting if they open up their pockets for us. So at the end of the conference, normally everybody, this is the time when we're, we're all supposed to be on the stage and we'll do a group photo and then I think we have refreshments outside, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to add while we have upper, Rasa, come here. Yeah. You want to see Mike? <laughs> Thanks so much all for being here. I was just gonna say, uh, I was telling Dave yesterday, it's kind of felt like a three year long Groundhog Day for kind of trying to organize this conference and then it never comes, it never comes, it never comes. So I'm really glad that you all came here together. It's been a pleasure to have you, but I'm also very happy to pass on these duties to another organization <laughs> and just attend next time as a presenter. Uh, and yes. Just, yes. And just in general, um, I'm, Super grateful to Alessandra, to Valeria, Dave, and Jerome for being such great collaborators. Uh, they really put so much work into this and they made our life easy as well. Uh, they were not too, <laughs> too demanding. Uh, they were very chill, so it's also a real pleasure, pleasure to work with you. So also, if you would like to host No Time to Wait after Prague, I would highly recommend doing that. Thank you, yeah, you can start a support group for the host <laughs> <laughs> institutions. Uh, okay, so um, we need a volunteer to take the photo, right? Yeah, we do have to figure out one. Um, but if everyone would stand up, well, you are invited to see if we can all stand on the stage at the same time and be safe. Like. <laughs>